and we are live. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to this week's Digital Dialogue Series. My name is Tawana Bain. I'm the founder of DDBS and JEDI, and I have some guests with me today that are going to be talking about how to bring culturally forward experiences to the city of Louisville collectively. Um, if you all will just introduce yourself, we'll start with Mario and then Yiro, Rihanna, and then Alonzo. My name is Mario Dorsey. Can you hear me? Do y'all hear me well? I can. Okay, my name is Mario Dorison. I'm the founder and owner of Live Export LLC. And what I do, I provide live video productions as well as a streaming platform for, con for clients. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. And Mario, how'd you come in contact with the collective? Well, uh, kind of like by happenstance. Uh, we was kind of like talking about different things that could be done here in the city. And um, we was having, it was actually me, you, and uh, Breland. <laughs> And from there, that's when I got more uh, under, a better understanding as to what I was trying to do with the collective. And then from there, I was like on board because working in unison, it, you get more done versus you just trying to do everything by yourself, especially when you talk about crossing over different skill sets, different industries and things of that nature, because of uh, it can become overwhelming. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So do I continue? <laughs> can you hear me? So? We can. Yero, are you up? Yes. I, see. I, can, I can hear you now. All right. uh, so my name is Yero. I am the owner, creative director. Oh, Yero may have frozen up on us. Uh, Rihanna, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, sure. My name is Rihanna. Um, I go by Rihanna Nicole. I'm a spoken word artist, and I am also the creator of Lipstick Wars Poetry Slam. Last but not least, Mr. Alonzo. Hey, everybody. I'm Alonzo Vermont. Uh, I am the uh, CEO of Redline Performing Arts. And uh, along with Rihanna, we are co-founding a new organization called the Creatives of Color Collective. And so we're working on that. We are very glad to be partnering with, um, with Jedi and with Tawana, who helped us out on a deal that we were working through with another organization and then brought us on the, on the team for the collective um, through Jedi. So we're really, really excited to be part of it. Awesome. All right, Yero, you're back with us. If you'll let everybody know a little bit about you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, my name is Yero. I am the photographer or a photographer and a creative director for Two Hearts Media. I've uh, been doing photography for about five years uh, on and off. And then, you know, COVID happened and then now I'm doing it full time. Uh, and I came across uh, the collective. Actually, a friend of mine sent me the information and said they're looking for a photographer. And I decided to shoot my shot. And here I am. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So for those of you that are tuning in, what exactly is the collective? So the collective is a 24 month cohort of culturally forward thinkers, uh, movers and shakers, as I like to say, um, that have all had their hands either in the production or the um, execution of some really cool cultural events in Louisville. And we wanted to help them scale their concepts and scale their events. And a creative way that we decided to do that was by developing this cohort where they could all work collectively to produce a larger scale event that highlights the experiences of their individual events to showcase what the experience is like so that they can promote people to come on board and attend their events later throughout the year. So over the course of this 24 months, um, they will be producing their first event, October 31st in downtown Louisville. And our goal is to grow that event uh, and by 2021, have it on a much larger scale uh, at Camp Bespoke in uh, central Kentucky. So with that being said, um, I would like to talk about the name of that event, where it came from and who the co-chairs are that are helping steer the collective um, and the experience that you all will, uh, will have. So the name of the event is The Black Harvest, and The Black Harvest actually uh, is the brainchild between Rihanna and Alonzo. 
Um, would the two of you mind sharing just a little bit about the name, um, how you came up with it, and just what people can expect uh, during Black Harvest? I'll let Rihanna take take the name because uh, she's more responsible than I am. Well, the the name, ironically, um, Black Harvest came from when I got married. It was the name, it was the theme of my reception. And um, that's where I thought about, um, I, I thought it would be good for this because I, I thought about um, Black professionals, Black artists coming together, growing their, their crafts. And it only made sense to, to use it for this. Um, you know, reaping the harvest, growing, working in the community, sowing seeds. And that's why I thought this would be a really great name to attach for this event. Yeah, and just to add to that, um, you know, I, 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 I had a pleasure of being a part of Rihanna's wedding and everything, and I loved the theme. Um, we've been friends for a really long time. And I love the theme. And so we were going to create an event, Black Harvest, on our own. But then we thought, man, doing it doing it with the collective and basically giving people a preview of everybody's individual events that are all culturally forward, culturally diverse, bringing together different groups of people would really be beneficial for Black Harvest. So we couldn't be more excited. And, um, you know, I think people are going to get a taste of a little bit of what everybody brings to the table. You know, there's going to be live performances, some panels. Uh, we're going to have uh, vendors there as well. We want to just create this experience that is fresh and new uh, to the Louisville community um, and, that, and a place where everybody's going to be welcome. And so, so we're really, really looking forward to it on October 31st. My goodness, you got me smiling cheek to cheek, um, just getting excited about it. Um, you know, Alonzo and Rihanna, it takes a lot um, to be willing to share your idea and a concept that you really had already birthed prior to the rest of the collective being formed, um, which is what the collective, the program is all about, being willing to um, to share, being willing to be vulnerable with your ideas, um, investing in one another in order to execute on a much grander scale. Um, so I really, really tip my hat because a lot oftentimes in life, um, many people hold things you know, really super close um, and, and, and rightfully so in, in many instances because maybe they've been burned or they've had a bad experience. Um, so I do wanna tip my hat to you. Um, Mario, I wanna come back to you. You know, when you think about that first, the kickoff of the cohort, and originally, you know, all looking at what is the best way to identify what it is that we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Um, how did you feel when you realized that Rihanna and Alonzo were willing to not only share so openly about what their concept was, but invite everybody to participate um, in bringing it to light? You hear me? Uh, I think that's an excellent idea. Um, and it takes courage, too, you know what I'm saying, to step outside those those comfort zones to allow other people to be part of an event that, you know, uh, that's your baby, you know what I mean? So uh, what I would suggest or how I would go about uh, dealing with that, I would like to get all the different, understand all the different moving parts with the event so that we can put it on and display it to the world. Because even though we're going to be at Encore and we're going to be demonstrating here in the Louisville area, we want to be able to broadcast this to the world. So I think being able to give them and show them the different things that we can do with live broadcast, we can give them the ability to see something that we created as black individuals that is showtime. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like adding all the, all the bells and whistles the from red carpet to multiple cameras multiple camera angles to high scale production type stuff. I think that's what we need to do with this to, to set the stage for, we may set the bar high to let them know that we can produce at a high level. And set the bar high. Um, there's no doubt uh, that you all will. You know, speaking of streaming, uh, that is your wheelhouse. So yes. can you tell us a little bit about, you know, for those that are watching, just about your streaming, your experience and what you're hoping to be able to bring to the group? Okay. Yes. Uh, so I've been I've been live streaming. I do live video broadcast. Uh, I started in you know doing commercial not commercials but concerts. 
uh, streaming concerts like the Baby Concert, Wifin, Lucci. Um, I've streamed Nick Cannon. I did all their shows a while and now. Uh, so I had a lot of experience with uh, live broadcasts. Now, adding and putting it in a sense to where you would see like an NBC staff, that's what I want to bring to this situation to where they're like, they was able to do that. You see what I'm saying? And it's a live broadcast because sometimes when people think of live video, they don't think of it like a live production where it's because when you see when you see like the uh, Empire, VMAs, stuff like that, those be live broadcasts. But people don't really know that. They think that it's, you know, all this production that's been done previous and then it's unfolding. Sometimes they shoot that live, but with a delay. You see what I'm saying? The known is about 10 second delay, but it'd be a live actual performance. And I think that we can do that too, especially with the multiple levels. We can add that to where we show it what's going on on each level in a way that they're not doing here in Louisville. I know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, Euro, you uh, are newest to the cohort. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're hoping to get out of the program and also what you're hoping to bring to the table. Uh oh, might have lost Euro again. Um, yeah, while we, yeah, while we um, allow her to, to get back on with us. So, I'm looking at you all watching just the brilliance, the ideas, the enthusiasm, the excitement. Um, but Rihanna, I have to tell you, as I was listening to just what you've been doing, you know, during our last um, session with um, the, the event that you created. And then I said, okay, well, let me see if there's anything that we need to help you with production wise. And you sent your materials. And I said, girl, you are, you are good. You do not need us. Talk about what it was like creating that event, executing that event, and how you expect that event to unfold uh, during Black Harvest. Um, I told Alonzo what you said. Yeah. Um, and I, I apologize in advance. You, you unfortunately, uh, you may hear my daughter in the background. I'm really sorry You're a about mom. that. Don't but, apologize um, for being a mom. <laughs> Well, okay, I'm just throwing it out there. But anyway, um, so Lipstick Wars has has was my baby before my actual baby. So um, I, I take a lot of pride in producing this and wanting. It, it's all about making women feel liberated through their poetry. It's about providing a platform for them to feel expressive and not feel policed by their their poetry and what they talk about. So. I knew going forward that I wanted this to be on a on a large scale. So oh, the first five years, Lipstick Wars has been at the Kentucky Center for the Arts. It has been in the Brown Theater. It's been in the Whitney Hall. It is, um, and then of course because of COVID, it it went to um, we started doing online events, um, online poetry slams. So it's it's been in New York. It's been in Chicago. It's been um, these different cities, and now. We're reaching other networks, other people in different states. So it keeps growing. Um, but I wanted this to be a part of the collective because I felt like you all can be the, the sugar to my Kool-Aid. There are things that I'm missing, you know, to make this reach the highest level that it could possibly be. You know, maybe within the next year, it can be a large conference. It could be um, a whole week thing you know so um but my goal is for the rest of the city that may not have a clue about what lipstick wars is for the the black harvest i want people to to come out and experience just a small taste of what lipstick wars is and it is a lot of empowerment especially um during the the whole climate of what the city is in with brianna taylor so it will be uh women poets that are going to be very expressive and very unapologetic about who they are through these poems. So I'm looking forward to it. Wow, so exciting. Well, I have to tell you, um, just in looking at all the material, I've already tasted the magic and it's just been absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind um, that this thing can be 
so big and so huge and take on so many different forms, um, which does bring me back to the cohort, right? So for those that are tuning in with us either on social media or backstage and hop in, um, it is a 24 month program where the members of the collective um, do not pay um, to attend. It is something that is sponsored by Jedi and they were thrown into a crash course um, in pulling off this event, which will take place October 31st from 5 till 9 p.m. at Encore on 4th in downtown Louisville, the top three levels of our building and our goal um, after the um, event is for them to really dig in into approximately 10 different training modules that allowed them to apply the best practices from producing the event and use that knowledge to work on developing and crafting and, and expanding and scaling their individual events that we all will have an opportunity to see on display during the Black Harvest um, on the 31st. So now, um, Alonzo, I will tell you, you really got me like way too excited as you began to talk about some of the elements that Redline Performing Arts was going to be showcasing um, during the Black Harvest. So can you walk us through some of those things? I'm going to tell you, I'm like, was jumping out of my skin as you were discussing the concepts. Absolutely. So one of the things that we are really committed to is uh, bringing the arts that represent everybody, right? So often we've been labeled as a Black theater company, but we're not that. We are a black owned theater company who services everybody and who welcomes everybody and who makes space for everybody. Now, at the same time, we want to be able to have productions where you see people of color as the leads and you don't think anything of it, that it's just the norm, right? And so we want to celebrate our music, our culture. So one of the things we plan to do is an Aretha Franklin tribute um, featuring Pat Matheson, who uh, we got to do this uh, Aretha Franklin tribute a couple of years ago. We did it at, over at St. Stephen's. Um, it was a huge success, and Pat is very popular uh, in the in the city with her music. So we're really, really excited to bring her in on this event. But the other part that we want to do is Broadway, and so it's a representation uh, that sometimes gets overlooked. When you think of Broadway, you don't often think of people of color. Um, in fact, it's called the Great White Way. So <laughs> oh, wow. uh, we are mixing that up and uh, and bringing in people of color and celebrating the music and the musicals that that tend to highlight our people, including The Wiz, Dream Girls, and others. Um, I'm so really excited about that. And then we have a couple of I'll leave it for surprises that we want to do the night of too. That people just have to sort of show up for and let it just happen as it happens. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, you know, we're talking about the different events um, that you all have um, that will be showcased, um, but part of the collective is also helping launch events and concepts that people have. And Mario, I have to tell you, the idea that you brought um, around drone tours was just super fascinating to me. Um, can you talk a little bit about the concept and what you hope to get out of the program um, with that concept? Yes, uh, so the objective was I was sitting, well, I, I go down to the waterfront to, you know, fly the drone, you know, it's kind of like uh, relaxing to me, you know, it's just like if you want, you have something you do, if, whether it's art, drawing or something like that, I like to go down to the waterfront, look at the water and kind of like just fly the drone, look at the city from the top, right? So I thought about it, I said, what if uh, I could add something like jazz music as it's you know, flying at night and maybe add, into, add in some uh, different screens, meaning you know, changing what they're seeing. So even though we're flying over the city, you can see that, but you can also see uh, two people talking or someone who may be doing poetry or you may hear their voice just to give those different experiences, but to to kind of uh, kind of put you in a sense of, think about if you were sitting out on the porch, right? And it was on a hot summer day, you know, you just out there relaxing, the wind's blowing. I want you to be in that mindset, but being able to provide the visuals and the audio that could help you get into a tranquil mode to where you're like, oh, I like this. So think of it as a, uh, a trip from work, right? To, to home where you listen to the radio, you may be listening to something. It's not for like, a, I guess you could say, 
it's not for you to be an hour long production or something like that. It's almost like a sound bite. So if you listen to a podcast, think of it like that in that in that capacity. So if drone tours come, you got you may have a series of drone tours where it's episode one through eight, but they're not long and drawn out. They're just something to kind of like put you in that type of mindset and that, that type of vibe to, to allow you to enjoy your evening. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and, and build and build from there because really it's going to uh, be predicated on the feedback of the people, the listeners, the viewers and things of that nature. So we adjust as we go along, but we want to stay in that vertical kind of like what she's doing with lipstick wars, you know what I mean? Where it's poetry, you know what I'm saying? Uh, spoken word, things of that nature, you know, but mm-hmm. adding the flight into it. Got it. Yeah. And we had an opportunity to see that on display um, during the bourbon uh, and black jockeys virtual right. bourbon tasting. Um, it brought it definitely brought a whole nother level of class and excitement um, and just depth um, to the event. And, you know, streaming as a new element um, or even hybrid for physical events um, certainly does help improve engagement. Um how did you get into that space um, and how have you watched it evolve since COVID? Um, I got into space. I was, I started doing digital marketing, right? So a lot of clients was asking for videos. So with videos and I've been studying, uh, follow, I study like social media. I study that consistently. So in doing so, the research was saying live video is going to be the top, is going to actually move to the forefront. So with Facebook, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, his concerns was that the space for advertising was running out. So he said with live video, that adds more space, more content being created, uh, longer videos, more ads can be served, right? So I said, hold on. (laughs) It only makes sense to kind of like pivot (laughs) to doing more so live streaming and stuff like that, because it does make a difference when you do a live video versus you uploading a video to Facebook or Instagram because the algorithm works for live video more so than regular video. So that was kind of like why I decided to go because I didn't want to be trying to play catch up later. So now, you know, as you know, COVID came in. Even before COVID, I had like 15 events for Indy, you know, across the nation from Mid-South all the way down. And, And I think we've lost Mario there for just a second. Um, but you Listen, know, I have, we love what he's doing. I, I'm so inspired too by by that. It's so innovative and, and fresh. I love it. I love it. Sorry, I just <laughs> no, no, not not at all. I was um certainly impressed. You know, it's one thing when you're hearing um someone kind of discuss the concept, and it's a whole nother thing when you're actually able to see it up live and up close and personal. And, you know, we had a multi venue streaming, you know, each day we were going from Kentucky um, Center for the Arts, we had Derby City Gaming, we had the Muhammad Ali Center. And to be able, while I was in one physical location, to send out a drone and to pipe in footage on the screen from a whole nother location, just added an element of engagement that I just, I, it was blown away, you know, and so I really am excited to see how you all are able to really, really, really leverage all of your, you know, different expertise, you know, and so again, I want to come back to the fact that, you know, one of the things that so far we've learned during our first cohort um, class was just, you know, what are some best practices with pulling off an event? And one of those are having really strong co chairs, right? Having a strong co chair for your event really allows the event owner and the producers um, to have people that are thinking through the experiences, right? So um, as serving in the co-chair role, what are you two hoping that you're able to bring to the table for our community once they've experienced this event? Well, first of all, I think, you know, Rihanna and I talk almost every day anyway. uh, And so we're always bouncing ideas back and forth she's always coming up with like, okay, what about this? What about this? And then, you know, we get to talk through it and figure out what's best. 
But I think for this event, it's going to be something unique. You know, there are fall festivals, but not for people in our age bracket, you know, young professionals, for example, you know, um, we wanted to make it an event that's going to be inclusive of the whole family, but geared toward that young professional, much like the audience and the people who come to Encore already um, in that great establishment that's already there. Um, kudos to whoever the owner is uh, <laughs> of Encore. But um, we want people to leave, you know, not only having a good experience, but wanting more because we feel like it's just a taste of what they're gonna get from all of our individual events in the future. And let me just say, I've already been stretched in working with the team, hearing new ideas, hearing fresh ideas. Sometimes when we work when we work alone and we're the top dog of our organizations, you know, we're not used to getting consistent constructive feedback. And so it's really interesting to hear everybody's takes uh, on how we can improve it. And maybe Rihanna, I think she's laughing at me, but you know, I, I, I think it's, it's really good. It's good. It's challenging, but good. Well, talking to you every day, I get the pleasure of getting constructive criticism. <laughs> oh, there's that. Um, but I, I, I will say this. Um, there are a lot of, um, a lot of networking events and things for black professionals all the time, but the purpose but the purpose of the Black Harvest is for it to be impactful. That's that's the thing and effective. So not only, okay, I'm just coming to another event. No, you're going to leave with something. You're going to leave with um, connections. You're going to leave with uh, some networking tips. You're going to leave knowing, okay, um, something that you didn't know coming in. So you might not have known about uh, Mario in the in the drones. You may not have known about Alonzo, and you want to be an actor or get into uh, uh, getting a five hundred one c three. You know you're gonna uh, learn. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all. <laughs> you're gonna learn more of that information coming to the harvest. And also, if you're like me, there's still gonna be candy. It's October the thirty first. You're still gonna get candy. Because there's there's a difference between buying the candy and getting it. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, the reality is, Rihanna, I, again, I say don't apologize. In this day and age, we are working from home. We are doing the best with what we have. You are a mom. And one of the things that I love about the collective is you all have been really thinking through how to make sure that there are no barriers for people to be able to attend, especially for those that have children. And given the fact that this event will take place October 31st, Halloween, how do we ensure that parents who have children can still participate? And so you all are thinking through very COVID safe ways to allow the kids to participate um, as well as to still get their trick or treat on in a very, very safe manner. So again, I, I say kudos um, to all of you. Um, Alonzo, I do wanna come back to a point that you made as it relates to constructive criticism and being able to, to take that information and, and to use it positively, right? There is nothing easier um, than not being in a seat where you're doing everything alone. Um, and so when that is the case, and you're not doing everything alone, and you are getting this constructive criticism, um, how are you managing that? Because that's not easy, right? When you are a, a creative person, you're smart at what you do, you're really good at what you do, um, and then all of a sudden, you're in this position where you have to work collectively. And let me also say this, while you don't are not charged to attend the program, there is no payment unless all of you are working together to secure sponsors. So there's never one, one person more important than the other person. If one person doesn't do their part, the entire event doesn't move forward. Tell me what that's like, because that is not easy. And oftentimes, very often, people cannot handle not being the, the, the most important, right? Tell us about that. It is difficult. Um, and as someone who is, I am a type A personality. Um, so I may get it done. Let's make it happen. Let's go. Uh, but at the same time, I want to be able to make sure it's done in excellence as well. And so sometimes I have my set way of how I like things to, to do things. 
Um, and so working in a, in a collaborative setting though, is so important and it, like I said, it challenges you even though it's not always easy. I think it's important to surround yourself with people who don't always agree with you, who people with people who don't think like you. Um, you know, in starting our organization, the Creatives of Color Collective with Rihanna, we've actually been sitting down every week with our team talking through our belief systems. What is our vision? How do we feel about these different things? And those are hard conversations, you know, because we're all having to give and take a little bit. But I swear at the end of the day, it makes all of us better. And so collaboration has is a big, big thing for me. Um, and um, and so I'm really, really excited to not only work with uh, to not only work with all of the, the entrepreneurs in the program, but with you leading us and you have so much business acumen yourself and a great portfolio. And you also have a get it done, let's make it happen uh, <laughs> mentality as well. And so I think that's challenging. It's gonna help lift all of us up. Um, to, so even, even doing this event on October 31st is a challenge, making it happen you know, so quickly. But I think if we set the bar high, all of us are gonna rise to the challenge. So I'm really, really uh, uh, looking forward to it. I would agree. Rihanna, is there anything you wanna add to that? Um, no, I, I would uh, agree with Alonzo because, uh, again, I mentioned it earlier, we all have things that each person needs. So I may be fluent in writing grants, but I may not be good at producing a show. You know, um, Alonzo may be amazing at networking, but he may not be able to get sponsors. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like everyone has something that each person needs to make it work. Um, you know, we're... we're a regular group of black power rangers so you know <laughs> yeah I, I i would agree um and uh mario i'm not certain if you are are back with us yet okay it looks like he is um uh will be back with us in, in just a second um but i do want to talk about why it's so important um, that we as the collective, right? And I say we because Jedi providing the mentors and the instructors and the training modules, um, that information is, is critical because the intent here is for you to also scale your individual events. You know, you can put on a great event, but what good is it if your event is not growing, if it's not becoming more profitable, if you're not finding the additional resources to execute at a higher level? But then on the collective end, your all success is important because of those that are watching that are trying to figure out why why is collaboration important why do why do i need to do that why do i need to connect with other people why do i need to listen to other people um so there is a lot at stake here right for all of us because you do have people that are watching you have people that are coming behind you and you have people that have already come before you that are wondering can this group, can this cohort of all black business professionals, all uh, creatives, right? Many type A personalities, can we work together, foster growth, execute, and still be together in a cohesive unit in 24 months? I'm telling you, if it was a reality show, you know, they were like, there's only gonna be one man left on the island. Um, but I believe that that is not going to be the case um, for this group. And for those that are watching, we have some of the collective that are here with us today, um, but we do have many other members that are a part of it, that are working um, and collaborating, and we do still have some seats that are open. So, but I, I would like to have you all speak to, you know, 24 months is a long time to work collectively, some with people you already know, but also with people that you're just now meeting in, in the, in the uh, team. Yeah, and I think, I think even knowing people is not always a benefit Ooh. because, you know, let's say I've worked with somebody that maybe we just didn't vibe that well before. Now I'm stuck with them. <laughs> That's not my story, but I'm just saying being able to work professionally, you know, through that is so important. But I think too, we have to hold each other accountable as well to, and I, I say this all the time that we have to do the work, um, that it's great to have talent. It's another thing to put in the work um, to create a platform where your talent can really shine. Um, you have a lot of people, I'll use the example of a dancer. 
Not every dancer should be a choreographer and not every choreographer should be a dance teacher. There's still things you need to learn if you're a great dancer to become a great dance teacher. Um, and so I think we're all stretching and evolving and growing and can challenge each other. And like you said, 24 months is a long time, but I'm, I'm predicting that we're all gonna be standing tall at the end and even better in our, and have sustainable organizations I think even in our first couple of meetings, we were able to ask each other, okay, so why are you doing this? What does this mean? I don't know that I really understand this. Can you explain this a little bit better? And um, it's uncomfortable. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. But like <laughs> we're turning in from turning from caterpillars to butterflies. And I think it's going to be really exciting to help everybody come out of their cocoons, if you will. I absolutely, absolutely love it. So um, I want to come back to Redline Performing Arts. Alonzo, um, I believe you and I came into contact first during the Jedi listening tour, organizers and allies, and you know what can the community do to help um, realize your dreams? What are the resources that you need? Um, and one of the things that I loved you know, is it takes a lot to come um, to an event where you're meeting a new organization or individual for the first time, um, and then actually taking the steps and the measures to actually follow up and actually document um, what it was that you delivered verbally um, so that we could take it to the next level. Um, tell everybody about Redline Performing Arts. What is the vision? What is the goal? Um, and what can they expect from you all outside of the collective over the next year? Absolutely. So much like Rihanna, um, Redline is my baby. Um, and really it was birthed out of me having worked in predominantly white spaces um, where I was normally sort of the token black guy, um, especially in theater, which at times I was okay with. And honestly, there were times that I felt like I got extra benefits because of that, mm -hmm. um, because nobody wanted to be racist <laughs> toward the one <laughs> black guy. And so working in those theater spaces though, um, it was in 2016 um, during the time of Alton Sterling and some of these other cases of police brutality that it just really hit me personally for the first time. Um, and I woke up one day and said, wow, I'm a black man. Like, yes, I live in a white community. I work in white communities. You know, I have great people that I love and I work with, but realizing that, and I happen to be directing Hairspray at the time, which is about racial, uh, racial justice. And I remember having this conversation with the cast of, are you guys paying attention to what's going on? We're doing this show about the civil rights movement that's set in the 1960s, but yeah. it completely parallels what we're going through right now. And it was like, everybody was coming to rehearsal every day, happy and not thinking, not having a care in the world. And here I am grieving and burdened for my people and for my community. And so it was in that moment that I felt like I needed to do something for my community. I grew up in West Louisville. I grew up on 39th Street um, and my family is from there. And so that was my opportunity to get back into my community. And so that's where Redline was birthed. Um, and our goal is to reverse Redline policies and curses through the arts. Um, and so that's why it's called Redline. So we want to make arts accessible and affordable for everybody. And so what that means is we want to have days where it's a pay what you can show. You can't pay full price for a ticket. You pay what you can and somebody else is going to help cover the cost of your ticket so that you can come and your kids can come. I think about the single mom. I was I was a child oldest of, a, of five with a single mom. We didn't get to go to theater productions because we couldn't afford to go to theater productions. If one of us, if, 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 if all five of us couldn't go, none of us could go, you know? And so creating those opportunities uh, for our community, bringing that back. And so that's what we're doing. A way people can get involved, if you don't mind me plugging this. Please do. Um, we started a, a program called Produce and More. And every Saturday we're at 26th and Broadway um, we're giving out fresh produce. Rihanna's been there. We're giving out fresh produce. We give away rotisserie chickens every week. We have a clothes closet. We give away books and we do voter registration as well. And so um, if you want to help support, we actually just launched today um, a Patreon. 
So if you go to patreon.com slash redline performing arts, you can actually become a monthly subscriber for seven, 10 or $15. And so not only are you donating every month, but you are actually getting great content um, at different levels that you can pay for. Uh, and that's a way for you to give back into uh, the community. So again, it's patreon.com slash redline performing arts, or you can go to our website, redlineperformingarts.com and slash community impact um, to get involved. And we are a community impact driven theater organization. So we are performers with a purpose. And so that's what we're doing. And we can't wait to continue creating more content and making more change in our community. Wow, I love it. And I certainly do hope that uh, those that are tuning in, that make sure that they support the work um, that Alonzo is doing um, and certainly um, follow Redline Performing Arts, because I have to, to tell you that name struck a chord with me from the very, very first day um, that I heard it. Um, I am curious, though, like, how did you arrive to that name? Like, what made you decide, like, this is absolutely the best brand for my organization? Yeah, so we actually started out as Kentuckiana Theater Project. And there, there was just something very inauthentic about that to me. And redlining had become a big issue in our in my church. We were talking a lot about redlining and what we can do. And my co-founder came to me and we were talking about starting this theater company. And his vision was to have a redline grocery store, to have a redline, um, you know, uh, library, all of these different organizations in West Louisville. And so that's where redline theater uh, production, redline performing arts um, came from. It's just really, really important to me. Um, I'm very, very big into politics as well. And so I'm always following what's going on um, in our nation and in our local politics and how we're going to get things changed and get things done. And so um, I always wanted it to be built in social justice that, yes, we are we are artists, we are singers, we are dancers, we are lighting technicians, all of that. But we are going to also fight for change. And so I'm happy to say we have invested over thirty thousand dollars already in six months in produce. Wow. Um, and food for West Louisville. And we're just going to keep doing that over and over again. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Gosh, that is so, so, so impressive. All right. So now we know a little bit more about your background with your organization. I am curious um, if you can just share with everyone, you know, what is your role with, within the collective outside of co-chair? What can they expect to see you um, managing during Black Harvest? Absolutely. So my role is going to be production manager. I've spent years and years and years helping make productions run um, and just lending my my mind uh, to making productions run. I have been on staff. I was on staff before COVID um, at All Nations Worship Assembly as the executive director. So my role is to make things go. And so uh, I'm looking forward to, to doing that with the collective um, and thinking about the technical elements of our live performances as well and sort of connecting the dots between all of the departments on how as a production, all of this will run smoothly. Awesome, awesome. All right, Mr. Mario, you're back with us. Um, live export, you know, we talked a little bit about what that is and what that does. Um, can you help bring to life one, what is your role um, within the collective and what can they expect to see you doing during Black Harvest? I can't hear you though. I think you might be on mute. Yeah, my role is broadcast and streaming solutions. So what I'm going to be, the role that we'll be providing will be, uh, how to showcase the event and the multiple um, moving parts of the event the best way so that the audience can be immersed into the content and like they're there. So that's that's the that's what I want to be able to present to you. Awesome, so awesome. And uh, also for those that are watching, um, Euro um, is not with us. And unfortunately there's some pockets of areas around the city where internet outage is a thing. And so right. Euro, just know we, uh, we miss you. We were hoping to have you, but that's okay. They'll get to learn so much more about you by following the collective um, at jedi.org and um, also by attending and participating in the event. 
All right, so you guys have had uh, two meetings so far. Um, we have also begun framing out what the brand of the collective will look like. So can we talk a little bit about for everyone how you guys are coming up with establishing not only the brand for the collective, but also the branding for the Black Harvest as well? I think uh, Rihanna can talk to the branding about the Black Harvest since that's her wheelhouse. <laughs> but I think the branding is really, really important. <laughs> it's really, really important. And you don't want to be just a dry, dull organization that happened. You know, um, we Rihanna and I have been talking a lot about logos and, and branding and not looking like a church dinner, you know, Sunday dinner. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> from the 90s, you know, because we sometimes get pigeonholed into what it means to be black, you know? And so uh, being able to stretch outside of that, I think is really important. No, I, I totally agree with, with what you just said. I think um, the name in itself uh, just just does something to me. I just love that. It's uh, Again, I keep going back to the climate of how, what's going on in our city. And I feel like the surface of black artists, of black creatives, black entrepreneurs is just on a rise. And we all feel that need to do something to be uh, constructive in, in our in our communities. And so that's why I, I feel like with some really dope branding and, and constantly, you know, plugging that in your ears, in your eyesight, in your minds, uh, the the the, the juiciness, the goodness of the of the right. black harvest through the through good branding. Now through good branding, it has to be good right. because right. if it's just you just posting here and there and sharing, you know, you know how Louisville is. They don't really take they don't bite they don't take the bait at first. You have to keep you have to keep throwing it out there, you know. <laughs> but also, but also remember, even though we in Louisville, we're going to be broadcasting to the world. <laughs> Yeah, true, 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 true. Right, right. super, super excited about that, especially after coming off of an event where we were broadcasting in over 20 different cities around the country. And many people, and I loved it, I was having a, a call with a colleague yesterday, and she said, my favorite part of the Pivot Champ Summit was having the ability to travel. And I'm like, what? She says, yeah, girl, I went from New York to Miami. <laughs> I told my one friend, like, hold on, I'll be right back. I got to head over to Atlanta. And I thought, right. I never thought about it in that context. But you're right, from our living rooms, from our kitchen tables, from our offices, we're right. able to travel all over. So awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so we were talking about branding. Right I do know that I've been able to see a glimpse, and I'm not certain if you all have yet, um, in the first wave of um, logos for the actual collective. And after you all wrap up with the logos for the collective, you're going to then launch the website for the Black Harvest, where people can learn more, see the schedule, register, get tickets. Um, talk to us a little bit about why branding and that piece of establishing your identity is so important and being able to pull off an, an event that people are actually interested in attending. Because you can put something together, but why is that piece so important prior to really getting going? Is that an open question? <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, just think it, I just think it's really, really important to make a memorable impression uh, on people. I think, for example, with the Black Harvest, it's just a great opportunity to show consumers, because that's really what our target is. We, we want to have consumers for all of our different organizations. Um, but it allows people to know what to expect. You can you know what to expect from an organization based on their logo, based on their graphics, right? Um, even if even if that initial feeling is proven wrong later, that initial vibe you get from them is really really important. So is it going to be sleek and chic and and grown and sexy? Right. Going to be like church basement ladies, you know, <laughs> cooking up fish on Friday night, like. No, you gonna stop hating on the the church ladies, okay? You <laughs> gonna stop with the hate. <laughs> but I think the way of distinguishing ourselves from competitors, distinguishing ourselves um, from other organizations. For example, there's going to be a great fall festival happening in West Louisville the week before 
our event, but our events are two different things, you know? We're targeting two different types of people. And so I think branding is so really, so, so important, uh, especially when you're talking about young, black, sexy, professionals, right. you know? Um, I think I think that, that reads something else to me. So I'm really, really looking right. forward to that. Yeah, that's that into, you know, uh, speak on that. I think that it is essential that we able to get those images that kind of speak to it, but not just the collective, but also to the community that we represent and, and having that come, up, come across in a professional way uh, so that we can get the impact from how we see things. Because like a lot of times, like even with big, uh, like NBC's, the big the big uh, broadcast networks, they you tend like to NBC, suffocate yeah. those. Hmm? I said, you like NBC. Let's believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so the a lot of times what you used to see with them, they're trying to suppress your culture. So you see what I'm saying? With this, we want, we want to let it breathe, mm. if you will. You know what I mean? Like, a, like if you do research, even if when you go into the research of running like marketing campaigns, they will tell you, Nielsen will pass the information that will break down the mindsets behind the marketers, right? So now is the time, given all the issues that's going on, for us to be very expressive, but do it in a way that's professional and, and the branding and everything and the presentation is on point. But it let it let it represent who the people really are. You know what I mean? Let's not suffocate. We gotta we we the trendsetters. Yeah, because when you look at when you look at brands, you automatically associate things with them. When you look at Starbucks, when you look at BET, Nike, you you immediately okay. I know that what this is about. This I know this right, brand. Right. I'm familiar with this, right, right. and I, I think that's definitely what we want to try to bring um, to Jedi with the collective. Oh, we will bring that. Well, I am not. Uh, there is not one bone in my body that. Uh, doesn't believe that that will be the case. Um, but you all have already really been doing that already, right? You've already been uh, curating very high level content. You've been executing very high level events. Um, what makes this unique is now you're banding those resources together, becoming more resourceful and bringing something to our city in a much power, more powerful, larger scale um, format. And, and that's important because many communities have done that over the years. And that is how we've ended up with events like Forecastle or Bourbon and Beyond and, and many others, right? And so how do we in the Black community um, take the uh, and not reinvent the wheel and say, if, if we want these things, how do we truly band together? How do we, in a very concerted and collective effort, leverage our resources as a team in order to pull that off. Because sometimes we have dreams of wanting to pull these things off alone. Um, I know in my case with the Derby Diversity and Business Summit, I had to pull together a cohort from around the country to pull together the first Derby Diversity Business Summit. And it is not diff it is not easy um, asking people to lend their resources and to trust and to believe and to navigate but if you're willing to do so, it can be extremely rewarding um, for not only um, your individual self, but for also your organization or for your brand. And so my hope is that by being able to take that blueprint and take that format and uh, assist you all with replicating that, that you will bring something to our city that it has been longing for for a very, very long time. And then in addition to that, some of the best kept gems, which is what I see all of you as and, and other members on the collective who are doing great work, um, people get to see that now on full display. And I would like to add, you know, some of the, the rationale or the reason why I think that it's not always seen is a lot of us utilize the week of the Kentucky Derby. And that's where we put a lot of energy and a lot of effort into um, very cultural forward formatted events. And unfortunately, during that time, there are so many others that are doing it at the exact same time. And so people have a tendency to continue to frequent the same things over and over. By pulling together and putting and producing a very culturally forward event, 
during this time of year where you're not competing with as much and you're able to really shine and have a lot of eyes on what it is that you do, now you're able to display to them, oh, that's what that is. That's who they are. That's what this event represents. Sign me up as a sponsor for you know the next Redline Performing Arts, or I definitely want to be a vendor um, at the next Lipstick Poetry Slam, or I absolutely want to register. Let me know where I go once Drone Tours you know launches its next event. And there's so many more you know events and concepts that people have on the collective. Um, so that's what I see. And that's what I get really, really excited about is being able to help on the front end, facilitate, you know, helping you guys launch and then um, really rolling up our sleeves and doing the work during the training um, after the event's over and how you apply that to your individual events, you know, um, and also following up with the people that you come into contact with during the Black Harvest. So um, it is 2.56. Wow, that went by extremely fast. And I thought, oh my goodness, we don't have Euro. We're not going to have enough content um, for this session, but clearly that was not the case. Um, a couple of things. One, I would like for um, those that have tuned in uh, again on social media or with us um, in Hopin, they are, they are in the midst of um, finalizing both their brand identity for the collective, as well as the branding for Black Harvest. And we're hoping for that to launch next week. So if you are wondering, okay, how do I know when ticket sales um, are available or how do I become a sponsor or a vendor? Um, make sure that you continue to follow the, the collective page at jedi.org. At jedi.org, under the collective, under programs, you will be able to access the Black Harvest site once it launches, as well as their social media and everything else that comes along with it, the event schedule, um, what you can expect. But in addition to that, it's really, really important that you all spread the word because we want sponsors for them. Again, this is a class that they're taking for 24 months. And so right now they did not pay to get into the program, but they're also spending this time creating something for our community. And 100%, 100% of any sponsorship dollars for the Black Harvest is split between the collective equally across the board. So the more that you help them raise, the more sponsors that they get, that directly goes back to their individual organizations. Um, for ticket sales, the only difference between ticket sales and sponsorship is 10% of their individual ticket sales actually go back to the endowment of JEDI, which is a foundation that is being established that they will be able to access for years to come when their organizations are looking for additional funding um, for different programs or initiatives that they are doing um, for their respective organizations. Um, so with that, guys, we've got two minutes left. Um, if you will, just give some final comments. One, um, if there are any other people or uh, types of um, experiences that you're looking to bring to the collective um, and why you want people to show up uh, for the Black Harvest on October 31st. So um, we've got Mario. If you could give your last words, then Alonzo and then Rihanna. The Black Harvest is going to be a movie. Hey, tune in. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> tune in. I mean, we could, I mean, being able to work with uh, various people from various backgrounds is what's exciting to me. You know, that's what I get thrills in, being able to help and also be appreciated. You know what I'm saying? Because when you when you're doing this and you're passionate about this, you know, you're going to run across all the different uh, stumbling blocks and things of that nature. So in the course of doing so and you trying to appease the different people so that they can understand what you really do without, you know, putting up barriers or saying, well, I want to do this. I want to do that by coming into the collective and we working in unison to, to put on events. It's, it's nothing going on here that's doing anything like that to where people are coming together to say, OK, let's make not only can we make some money together, but let's put on an event that is at this level. You know what I'm saying? A high level event. That's what I want. That's what I'm most excited about. Alonzo. Um, I would just say, you know, get involved with these organizations as much as you can. You know, yes, we're looking for sponsors for Black Harvest. For the collective, if you just decide you want to write a twenty thousand dollar check to to the collective, come on, we'll take it. Ain't nobody turning it away. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but I think supporting these amazing entrepreneurs—I mean, sitting in these meetings, 
hearing everybody speak, hearing everybody's vision is just super inspiring to me. And um, like I said earlier, you know, you can support Redline on our website, um, launching several things. And so uh, I'm just really, really excited to be part of it and can't wait to see uh, what the future holds for us. Uh, yeah, uh, again, everything that Alonzo said and one of the things that um, I'm taking away from this experience already is just us coming together and trusting each other and believing each other and what we can do. And I think our, uh, once we do that, the community will see that and be inspired and continue to come to uh, come to these events. And um, I just think it's going to be a great expression of black creativity and uh, black celebration. And again, you know, uh, don't be, af don't be afraid to drop those sponsorship dollars. I have a child, as you can hear in the background, she needs dollars. Um, and also that is supporting lipstick wars. Please check that out. It's on uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Google me. I'm out here in these streets and I'm looking forward to looking forward to it. October 31st, Black Harvest. Well, thank you all so, so very much for coming on today and being willing to share. Um, and then also just being willing to uh, be vulnerable and take a chance on a new concept. Um, we are now getting ready to head over to networking. So for those of you that are backstage and want an opportunity to maybe ask some additional questions, you're not sure if you want to be a part of the cohort just yet, um, we are going to be leaving it open until the 30th of September. So you still have time to join and become a part of the team. Um, in the networking, on the left side of your screen, you will see live where you see the networking feature. Um, simply click that button. You will come to another screen that will ask you if you are ready. When you are ready, hit the button and you will randomly be paired up with others that have attended the event. Um, you will have a, a 30, three seconds or less, or I'm sorry, 30 seconds or less to get to know them, for them to get to know you. And if you all decide that you want to connect, you can do so by both hitting connect and think of it as like business cards out in an event or a trade show. They will land in your dashboard so that you can follow up with them at a later date. We have met some amazing members of the collective. And for those that are interested in knowing who else is participating, please go to jedi.org Click on programs and under programs, click the collective so you can learn more about the seats that are available or those that are participating. With that, we thank you for tuning in. We ask that you come back and join us next week for the Digital Dialogue series. Same place, same time. Have a great one.